I'm Brad Cattell with Tiny Texas Houses. And I'm Mackie Smith. We're about to give you a quick demonstration of what it takes to be able to go ahead and build a Tiny Texas House. And by what it takes, I mean what do you wear and what are the safety tools that you should be wearing if you want to take all the proper precautions. Absolutely. Uh, the basis is probably the tool belt. This is what all the tools are going to go in. So I'm going to put this on first. These shoulder Maybe straps he's see. using are very uh, valuable when it comes down to having a really heavy tool belt. It keeps the weight from knocking your hips out of whack from carrying all the weight that you guys get to carry in if you start putting nails in here and screws in here and your hammer hanging on one side and your drill hanging on the other. So you tighten it up and make sure your straps all fit to help carry the load off your hips. It's actually yeah. a genius development. From the and they've days. got good uh, straps so this doesn't flop loose or anything like that. You can adjust all this up. That's good enough for now. Now, what he needs quickly when he goes in there He's got a packet with things he might need while he's up on the ladder um, doing his framing or doing other work. So he doesn't have to run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Favorite tool? Uh, well, tape measure. Everything's got to be measured. That's the first step to almost anything. You can't so do anything without it, really. You're going to be guessing the rest of the way. So got to have that tape. This one is extra super duty. Called the Fat Max because mm -hmm. it can stretch out yep. 11 feet. Best and you can this get. Is, this is a 16 foot tape, so it'll only go out 16 feet. Uh, for you might want 25 foot for for a lot of use, but 16 feet is pretty good for a lot of a lot of things. We're not working with wood over 16 feet anyway, so. But if you are, just keep in mind the only reason you're carrying the smaller one is it's lighter, a lot lighter. That's a dense steel. Mm -hmm. Next favorite tool. Framing hammer. Now this is a modern framing hammer. Gives you a lot of advantages, including how to set a nail if you really don't know and don't want to hit your fingers. But nowadays we mostly use nail guns. This has a unique feature. It's good. A little and magnet it, right up top. So the nail snaps in there, and then you can set it. Go ahead and set it. And then right. you, can, you can just do it. Go ahead and set it. Right okay, there. Let me find a. Uh, oh. This is a hollow core door, isn't it? Don't worry no, about it's it. a solid door. Just set it. Okay, there you go. Now, that is a framing hammer. This is a finish hammer. Finish hammer is for smaller nails, and so you don't leave a big waffle. This has got a really nice waffle grid to grab a nail when you're really trying to drive it hard. This is for smaller nails. It's very soft, smooth finish. So if you hit the wood by mistake when you're finishing it off, you don't leave a big ugly dent. See? I'll show them what that yeah. does. Yeah, that leaves a nice waffle. This, but... Right? Mom won't mind, huh? <laughs> no, okay, now, that's got also what we used was a cement coated nail. They're used in nail guns. And the reason we use these nails, this is then the reason we use nail guns later on, is because you can't drive a nail into the wood that we use. It's too hard. No. Next. Crescent wrench, just useful for everything. A lot of lag bolts, if we're going to be putting them in, things like that, rather than have a bunch of wrenches, you can have that alone. Well, you should probably say this is not really the best thing to be tightening bolts with long term. This is more like a get them close enough. You can really strip them, do a lot of damage to your bolt heads and end up with a strip bolt. That's just an all around, try to get an undone tool and get it mm -hmm. started tool. Um, this is actually a traditional sort of utility knife. The only problem is you got a, thing, a little thing like that. It doesn't have a lot of good grip. Nowadays, open it up just like a nice little switch. Turns into that. Yeah, so I'm you much can pack it away. Too. And if you need to, a lot of times you'll put it in your pocket even. This will go in your pocket, yeah. clip on the side of you, or go on your and belt. And you can see the difference in bulk between those two. That's really... Modern technology is on a lot of things for tools. I will say they're a lot more comfortable to your hand. A square. Going to absolutely have to have mm -hmm. this speed square, it's called. For cutting up two by fours, two by sixes, it works really well. You'll use it all the time. Absolutely. Essential tool. Chalk line. If you have to make a line and you want to do it quick and it has to go over a long distance, you're going to pick that up, stretch it out, and clip. You have a little line right there made out of chalk. That lasts long enough to go ahead and lay out your floors, do all your markings. Essential tool. Essential tool. Now, black marker. Yeah, definitely, Permanent marker. definitely important. That works when you have wet wood or anything else. You've got to be able to mark, otherwise your tape measure ends up being a problem. Mm -hmm. And you notice we've got two holes here on the tool belt for marking utensils. They know that that's, you need a pencil and a, and, a, and a marker, so yeah, that's definitely important. The reason you're going to have this in there generally is to sharpen that pencil. Yeah, okay. I've got the other knife in there. Oh, you got the other one? Yeah. Okay. Now, want to be safe. One of the things about safety is don't want to hurt your hands. So I consider gloves more important than all the other things we're going to put on. Because yeah. if I hurt my hands, I can't do any other work. Yeah. Every time you touch wood, you should be putting gloves on because 
it's, every time I do it without, I, I regret it. Almost all always wood. get a splinter. All wood, like we deal with, is like a nail. Okay, it goes in, it can go in as long as the thing is, and it hurts, but also carries in dirt and all sorts of other garbage. Yeah. We should also probably just mention quickly, this is, uh, these are these goat skin gloves, and they're, they're really nice. You can get some fancy new ones that are modern and have like uh, kind of nylon material and stuff, but I like the feel of these better. They, they feel really great. They on. don't last a real long time because the soft leather or really smooth leather, so they don't, they're not really durable. For general work, they work really mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, this is not a comprehensive how to be protected and tool safety course. This is a quickie, guys. And so we're gonna go ahead and bat, blast through a couple of things that now, if you wanna take care, especially if you have any respiratory issues at all, you must have Absolutely. one of these little masks. Now this is a really good quality one, has ribs on it. <laughs> I highly recommend you make people put their initials on them so that way if you see them on the ground you know who left it laying around because they're very expensive a couple of bucks a pop but I, I actually like these with the two straps too because you can uh, take the top strap off if you're not don't need full protection you can kind of put it down uh, so you can breathe a little bit easier if you, the ones with one strap can slide off a little too easy and stuff I like oh, the plus they don't give you a good seal I don't yeah think. a good seal and these this is really also good. what's called more of a hard molded it fits your face yeah. much better and you get a really good protection yeah, off of it. <clears throat> the next level up has a valve in it, and that allows you to not breathe um, hardly any particulates in at all, and allows you not to have to breathe out into your glasses. If you wear glasses, this is a monster. Mm -hmm. It fogs my glasses up in the back. Doesn't take very long when you can't see anything to figure out that's not safety. Yeah. Um, so there are other val um, types of masks. Okay, once you get that on, these are the glasses I'm talking about. So if you put that on, and it's really cold outside, and then you put this nifty set of goggles on. It's a full protection set. <laughs> Not very pretty. There are some stylish ways to do this. You can look like you're coming out of Hollywood if you want to. Yeah, these are and the coolest. don't want to hurt your ears. So guys are shooting guns off, uh, nail guns. Not really gun guns. And if you are uh, saws going and all those types of things, they're using a lot of decibel count. You have to have those. Yeah, I can, I can barely hear you talking. Uh oh, what are we You doing? can probably barely uh, hear me talking yeah. with this uh, mask on. The mask is really for the most important thing. When you start pulling down the ceiling, that's rat poop and then pigeon poop, bat poop, anything else in the ceiling could be there. That's important. Your eyes the same way. So treat those especially good. Your ears, you can even use earplugs. Ultimately, though, Mackie has shown you what you have to have just to be able to go out there and start building a tiny Texas house. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back in touch with some more of our episodes of how to build a tiny Texas house and how to do it without hurting yourself. Appreciate it. Thanks.